the Education Department here at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery. Today we're going to do a tour of our outdoor space and our sculptures here at the gallery. These sculptures are titled Man from the Caribou Totem and are eight feet tall. They welcome visitors as they come to the gallery. This sculpture represents the body, while the sculpture that we just looked at represents the soul. They were created by Anishinaabe artist Amu Anjikineb. Next, we're going to look at a piece by Michael Belmar. It's over here. This piece is called Fireline. The left side of the sculpture represents a forest devastated by forest fire, while the right side represents a pristine boreal forest. The raven in the middle of the piece is meant to represent the fire break. So this is how the fire is stopped. For Michael, Indigenous people are like the fire break because they are protecting their culture, language, and land. These sculptures were made from clay and then cast in bronze by artist Mary Ann Barkhouse. The one wolf looks up at the raven as if listening for its call. Wolves and ravens have a symbiotic relationship. This means that they help each other. Ravens will often find food, such as a dead moose or deer, and alert wolves through their calls. Often, wolves are painted as villains within stories, like the big bad wolf in The Three Little Pigs, or Little Red Riding Hood. But there is no good or bad in nature. Wolves are a very important part of our ecosystem, and they need to be protected. Marianne Barkhouse's sculptures are a reminder of this. We love our outdoor space here at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery, and we'd love for you and your family to come visit us when it is safe to do so. We also love our non-human visitors, like birds, squirrels, and other type of animals. Today I'm going to show you how to make a bird feeder so that you can welcome woodland visitors into your own outdoor space. The materials we'll need for this project are a pine cone or a toilet paper roll, a piece of ribbon or string, some peanut butter or wow butter, and some bird seed. Start off by tying the string or twine to the top of your pine cone. While any shape or size pine cone can be turned into a bird feeder, the larger the pine cone, the easier it will be for birds to perch or cling to. You can collect pine cones directly from pine trees, or you can buy them at a craft store. Just make sure that they aren't scented or covered in glitter, as this could be harmful to birds and other animals. Next, spread peanut butter or wow butter onto your pine cone using a knife or spreader. You are going to want to put enough peanut butter onto your pine cone so that the bird seed will stick. While birds will eat the peanut butter all on its own, bird seeds or sunflower seeds are a tasty treat. Roll your pine cone in a dish of bird seed, pressing lightly so that the seeds stick. And there you have it, you're all done. Your final step will be to hang your bird feeder outside in a tree or another spot that birds and wildlife like to visit. Before you know it, your bird feeder will be a hot spot for chickadees, woodpeckers, and other kinds of birds. <laughs>